everybody, and welcome to another Darkest Dungeon mod overview. My name is Element5, and today we are finally taking a look at the Ringmaster. This mod is developed by the Holy Chicken, Shay, Zap, Anonymous Koala, and Chasse. And over the past year, the Ringmaster has become one of the most requested and recommended mods since I can remember, and after playing it this last week, I can absolutely see why. It's not that this class is very complicated or overdeveloped, it is just raw fun with a lot of charm and a decent bit of power. In fact, most of the recommendations have come from other modders, some of whom rank its latest version in their top three favorite class mods, which for me carries a lot of weight. And her description on Steam reads, Charismatic, Enigmatic, Barbaric. The Ringmaster leads the Butcher's Circus with a gleeful grin and an iron fist, with her unique set of skills able to delight and dismay in equal measure. Many have tried to usurp her, and none have lived long enough to regret it, much to the glee of the bloodthirsty rabble. The Ringmaster is a versatile and dynamic addition to any party comfortable anywhere on the battlefield. She can bestow buffs upon her allies or rain down blows upon her foes, all while entertaining the crowd and everyone around her. And when it comes to her backstory, you know, we're left with a little bit of a unique situation here where the Ringmaster is clearly a character canon to Darkest Dungeon thanks to Butcher's Circus. But all that's really been shared about her identity is her aesthetic and that we have names for her puppets, oddly enough, which came from just a few tweets and subtle hints in response to the modders reaching out directly to Chris Barasa on Twitter. But when thinking about her backstory, I'm reminded of the times that I used to ask my community just how we imagine aspects of day-to-day -day life to be in the Darkest Dungeon Hamlet. Are there schools or daycares which uh, necessitate things like the puppet theater? Are there regular competitions, dances, or town halls? Are there weddings? <laughs> Is there any modicum of normalcy outside the goings-on that exists, say, in the inn? Or in the brothel, for that matter? And thanks to the last DLC, we now have a pretty great idea of how things play out, at least whenever the circus comes to town. You know, for a free expansion, the Butcher's Circus still retains a mixed reception on Steam, but one very welcome positive is the amount of artwork, music, and the inspiration for a fantastic and mysterious character. And while she functions like a mix of jester and flag, she brings the circus with her as her abilities come packaged in gladiatorial showmanship, literally performing powerful abilities to the jeers of her circus audience. Slamming enemies with a grand entrance, bowing her way to stage rear, or passing the spotlight to others for a chance at glory. And her buffs, both in battle and camping, come with an air of deadly dichotomy. Thumbs up or thumbs down, pass or fail, life and death hanging on the flip of a coin. You get the sense that execution is the name of her game, and even at the very precipice of oblivion, the show must go on. Annihilated. And speaking of dichotomy, it is important to note that she has a custom virtue and affliction. Exultant, which gives a large boost to crit chance. Her crits actually stress heal others more than the average character. She will sometimes stress heal the party and bestow a guaranteed critical hit buff on an ally. And when attacked, she has been known to brutally retaliate in spectacular fashion a sight to behold, as it has been said. But you have a 75% chance to see her become barbaric, which comes with increased damage and speed, but decreased dodge and stress relief skills. She'll very frequently attack her teammates, raise the stakes, and perform random actions. You won't like her when she's angry. Speaking of which, when she falls below 40% HP in general, she gains a repost, which becomes stronger at death's door, 
and upon reaching Death's Door, cleanses dots from herself, which is intended to mimic the sort of circus PvP Death's Door mechanics. And as you would expect, she benefits from the Performance Hall District, and she gains a 40% buff to Stress Relief skills when she crits, and due to her celebrity, is limited to have only one Ringmaster per group. So as we always do, let's take a snapshot here of her stats and resistances before we jump into her kit. And that begins with max HP 18, which is kind of low. This is actually lower than say a Seeker Grave Robber at 20. So um, she also has 10 dodge. And I think that the combination here is meant to actually see you activate her less than 40% HP repost more active. But I think she really does sort of feel like a jester both in sort of theme and shuffle and uh, end with, with hit points. So that sort of makes sense. Zero prot, slow speed, no accuracy, 5% crit, which is important. We'll talk about in a second. And then damage five to 10. Now her resistance is we do have 35% disease resist because of robust. Um, but otherwise the really important things to point out here are the 75% death blow resist and the decently high bleed and blight resist. And that again is to mimic and sort of pay homage to the sort of uh, mechanics that come from the PvP Butcher's Circus. So characters in the circus have a default 75% base, and, you know, dots work differently. Now, if I just mouse over her abilities, you'll see that they're, you know, usable in the first two positions, the back three, the back two, the first position, all positions, back three, and front two. So she is really kind of all over the place. She can kind of shuffle like a jester does, and that begins with Last Laugh. Last Laugh is a melee ability, only usable in rank one or two. It attacks unenemy in rank one or two, an accuracy base 85, a crit modifier 5%, a 100% chance to bleed for two over three at level one, and then this nice little nugget down here, plus 100% crit multiplier versus enemies with hit points below 40%. So that should tell you that this is kind of getting, you know, an execution buff, if you will. But let's talk about this 100% crit multiplier real fast. So we know that the crit modifier of this ability is five. We also know that hers is natively five. So that's 10% when she swings this. So if you were to swing this at an enemy below 40%, you would see 20% chance to crit. So next then is Flummox, only usable in 2, 3, or 4. This targets an enemy in 2, 3, or 4. It's a ranged attack, accuracy base 90, does not do much damage with minus 75%. Again, 5% crit modifier, and this has a 100% chance to stun and debuff the target minus 3 speed at level 1. So this is a, a really comfortable sort of utility ability here that you can use from rank 2 or back, and it's just a nice stun. Okay, and now the show really starts with Grand Entrance. Usable in rank 3 or 4, this is a melee attack which targets an enemy in any position. It moves her forward 2 up to the front line, an accuracy base 85, a crit modifier of 7%. It also knocks back an enemy two places, which is pretty great. That's a very nice shuffle utility. But this piece right here is really cool, the 15% damage on first round. So this kind of shuffle utility is not only great for getting her up to the front line, but also knocking important enemies to the back. But you have that incentive of extra damage if you use it on round one, which is really cool as a grand entrance. So next then we have Neil. Now that we have come all the way up to rank one, we can target an enemy in two, three, or four with a ranged attack that has an accuracy base 100, a damage modifier of minus 100%, so not gonna do any damage. But very importantly, it bypasses guard, it breaks guard, and it renders an enemy unable to be guarded. It also pulls them all the way up into rank one, and then it buffs herself for three speed and 50% damage for the next turn. So the way to visualize this in my mind is to think about Mortal Kombat and using the Scorpions sort of get over here, right? You're just singling something out. It doesn't even matter if it's guarded and you're saying get up to the front line and then she buffs herself to smash it really, really hard with last laugh in the next turn.
And that brings us to the most interesting ability in this character's kit, which is Fan Favorite. This is a buff usable in any position. It buffs a friendly target for 20% damage and 8% crit. And on monster kill, they will stress heal the party minus four with a 50% chance. And this has a party limit one, meaning you can only cast this on one member of your group at a time. Now, what you're going to see here is that it casts sort of like a, you know, the spotlight on somebody to give them a chance at glory. They will not have buff markers because of the mechanics of this uh, sort of overtaken by the way the spotlight works, but indeed they are getting that. And the important thing to note about this is it has three charges. So if this hero with the spotlight kills an enemy, that is one charge consumed. And after the third is consumed, then the spotlight goes away and you can recast it on another member. But if they get the kill with the spotlight on them, they have a 10% chance to actually develop a very special quirk, which we'll talk about in a second. So that brings us to Barry and Leon. <laughs> this is usable in position two, three, and four. This is a self de-stress of minus six, as well as a plus 15% stress relief skills buff. So stacking this turn after turn is a pretty effective way to bring her stress down. Um, it also makes her a little bit more efficient when stress healing when she crits. But other than that, it's a pretty goofy little stress heal. And finally, take a bow. This is only usable once per battle. It's only usable in position one or two. It moves her all the way back. So you can kind of think about this like a Jester's Finale. It will stress heal the rest of the group minus four. And then it buffs her plus 12% damage, six accuracy and 4% crit in the next battle. So the, you know, the buffs here might look a little confusing because this says two battles and then it sort of negates for one battle. But the effect is the next battle should come out with those buffs. So now that we know how her abilities work, let's talk about how to kit her in a dungeon. And that starts with thinking about the fact that Last Laugh is kind of her, you know, bread and butter attack. It's also a really nice bleed ability with that crit multiplier as an execute. So if you want to use her aggressively, this is probably always going to be in your kit. And a nice combo with that is Grand Entrance, right? You sort of start in position three or four. You open the fight with Grand Entrance for that 15% damage. You knock back an enemy. And then because you're in now one or two, you have the ability to use Last Laugh. And this is going to be really effective in, you know, any dungeon that is more vulnerable to bleed. So we're thinking about the Warrens or the Wield for that matter. But, you know, maybe now that you're up in the front line, you want to equip Neil. And therefore, you know, you've already shuffled an enemy all the way to the back line. Why not pull another enemy up from the back to the front? You know, get over here, buff herself, and then smack it super hard with Last Laugh. And then, you know, this is a pretty good aggressive kit. You just have to ask yourself what you want to slot into here. Now, if you're going to be in position one, you know, a pretty good option would be to take Fan Favorite since it's usable in any position. You could also take you know, take a bow and then go all the way back and repeat the process with Grand Entrance. And I think that's a pretty good way to play it. If, on the other hand, you go into the Cove, for example, or maybe she's just taken on too much stress and it's time to kind of switch, you know, switch things up. Maybe keep her in the back and use Flummox and have, you know, a really, you know, worthwhile stun and sort of uh, utility. And then on, t on top of that, you're bringing, you know, fan favorite, you're, you're de-stressing her over time. Uh, maybe you have Grand Entrance just in case you want to come up front. So you have a lot of options and a lot of play here, uh, but I think ultimately she should be kind of aggressive. She's, she really does sort of feel like, you know, a Flag Jester mix, and you want to see her doing really good damage. So the other thing we need to talk about real fast is just the power of Fan Favorite. Now this was sort of in response to the fact that most buffs in Darkest Dungeon are not worth the opportunity cost, they're not very interesting. This is supposed to be really worth that cost and be sort of fun to play with. And if you see your character with that spotlight and it gets that killing blow, you see, you know, the stress heal and the roses fly. Um, that's fun for one, but also it has a 10% chance then of giving you an evolving quirk, 
which effectively makes the character better and better at stress healing the group when it gets crits. A very, very cool bit of theming, and I really appreciate what they did with this. Okay, so let's talk about her camping kit here. I love the theme of these, and that starts with Prize Box. This is a time cost three, self only, produces a Ringmaster trinket. So this feels on the surface a lot like the Antiquarian's time cost three, produce a random trinket, but the difference is this mod comes packaged with Chassé's single player circus trinkets. There are 103 single player circus trinkets that have been rebalanced from Butcher's Circus to be playable in single player. And by using this, you're gonna, you know, get one of those, which is pretty powerful and pretty neat. Now you can also play with the light version of this class, which just reverts this back down to the same as the Antiquarian's ability, just getting a random trinket. But I really like the idea that, you know, because she comes from the circus, she brings something from that world with her and you get to spin the wheel and see what it is. So next in is coin flip, time cost four, party 50% chance, 15 dodge and two speed for four battles. So again, we're playing with that deadly dichotomy, the 50% chance coin flip. And I like these buffs. These are good buffs. They, they feel like uh, a subtle way to sort of make your group a little bit more combat savvy. So next is entertain a time cost three, all companions minus 10 stress and minus 10% stress received for the next four battles. So I, I just think this is a really well balanced and, and kind of goofy one, you know, again, a lot of her utilities in stress healing, and this just adds to that. She certainly is an entertainer at heart, just a bit of a different one. <laughs> okay. And finally, prestigious aura time cost three, all companions, 20% bleed and blight resist 8% death blow resist. So, um, this is just, you know, more playing on the bleed blight and high death blow resist because ostensibly the head cannon here is, you know, the reason that those mechanics exist in the PVP circus is because of her prestigious aura. So she's bringing that out into the world and making the rest of your group sort of share in that survivability. Now, when talking about trinkets, I just want to reflect again on the fact that she comes packaged with those 103, you know, single player circus trinkets. There's a lot to play with there, but I, I really think you want to think about crit accuracy and damage with this character more than anything because her utilities and stress heals. And if you can pack on that crit, then that multiplier is going to be really, really nice with last laugh. So, I mean, there's so many things to pick from here, but let's just say... Uh, right here, okay, surgical gloves, 8% crit melee, 5 accuracy. So anything like that I think is going to be, you know, for the most part, pretty useful and worthwhile. And then if we come on into this Nomad Wagon, we have the Mask of Unending Theatrics. So if she is up front and she gets a hit with Neil, she'll have a coin flip chance to get 20% crit and 70% stress relief skills. Very nice uh, in endless mode as a means to just really calm the group down and be landing those stress heals. There are just so many details packed into this mod. You have hundreds of barks added as, you know, reactions to the different abilities that she does. You have the fact that when she misses, the audience boos versus cheers. Uh, you have all of the trinkets. I mean, it's just so full of charm. And the more that I play it, the more I'm sort of bummed that Red Hook just didn't make this, you know, an official character when they released the last DLC. But of course, I want to know what you guys think about this modded class in the comments below. And I'd like to know what you guys think her backstory really is. And of course, I'll have a link to download this mod as well as the standalone light version and the trinket pack just below the video. Remember that as long as you're playing on PC, it is quite easy to install mods through the Steam Workshop. All you have to do is head over there, find the mod you're looking for, make sure you subscribe to the mod and then boot the game and then head over here on the side of your save file to your mod selector and then make sure that you click in the one that you want. Make sure you pay attention to on the Steam page if any of them require your mod to be loaded in a specific order. A special thanks out to the Holy Chicken for giving me a ton of hand-holding this week and making sure I had access to all the files and really understood this class. This was a lot of fun to record and play with, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more mod overviews and everything else Darkest Dungeon. We have a ton to dig through from the past year, and I cannot wait Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.